Hey, Flying Free ladies. This is Natalie Hoffman with flyingfreenow.com. And today I'm going to be answering a question that came up last week, but I didn't get a chance to talk about it last week. So we're going to talk about it this week. And the question is, can you touch on how to rebuild your confidence after leaving a toxic relationship? Okay, so before I get into this, I want to just tell you or remind you that I have a free workshop coming up October 1st and October 4th. It's the same exact workshop, but you can pick one date or the other. The October 1st workshop is on a Thursday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. You can register for that free at the link that I put above this post. And then the one that I'm doing on October 4th, it's a Sunday, and that's going to be at uh, I believe it's at 2 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. So it's going to be an hour. It's actually about 45 minutes of a workshop and then a Q&A, live Q&A afterwards. So um, I hope you'll join me for that. So anyway, for those of you who are just joining, the question I'm going to be talking about today is how to rebuild your confidence after leaving a toxic relationship. Okay, so here's what I want to talk to you about. Confidence comes as we accomplish things. So for example, if you have a child who's learning how to, and you're trying to teach them how to make an p- apple pie, for example, and they, they may not have a whole lot of confidence in their ability to make that apple pie at first. But after they've made an apple pie, the next time they um, go to make an apple pie, they're going to feel more confident in their ability to make an apple pie. And after that child has made lots of apple pies, they're going to be very confident in their ability that they can make a, a really great apple pie. All right. Confidence depends on our past accomplishments and victories, all right? But here's the thing. What if you don't have a lot of past accomplishments? Or what if you grew up in an abusive home environment and then you ended up getting married to someone who was also abusive, all right? Gaining, getting confidence in your abilities and confidence in who you are is going to feel impossible because you don't have uh, this whole string of you know, victories and achievements in your background. But what I want to offer you is what if you don't need confidence? What if all you needed, because again, confidence depends on outside circumstances, which we can't always control. What if all you needed was self-confidence? All right. You, self-confidence is something that comes from inside of yourself and it is not dependent on anything else outside of yourself. And this, I would like to offer that this is what we really want to cultivate in our lives. So do you know how you would go about cultivating a beautiful garden of colorful self-confidence? You're going to have to plant something. Do you know what you're going to have to plant? You're going to have to plant brand new thoughts into your brain's programming. And then you're going to have to not only plant them, but you're going to have to actually nurture them. You're going to have to water them and feed them and let the sun shine on them. So those new thoughts grow up into beliefs that you firmly believe with all of your heart. They need to be deeply embedded beliefs in your psyche. All right. And then the other thing you have to do is pull out the weeds of all of the beliefs that will try to choke out your new beliefs that are creating self-confidence. All right, so you might like that analogy, but let's bring this down into real life, okay? Into a real life example. Let's say that you've been in an emotionally abusive relationship. I know for me and for others, a very common thought is that you're not good enough, all right? Your opinion doesn't matter. What the other person says is really important, and matters and means something, but your opinion and the things that you say are are unimportant. And you think that, I don't know if you've heard um, my favorite, you, if you followed me if at all, you probably know that my favorite singer is Sarah Bareilles. She has a song called out, call, out called Little Voice. And I love that song. Go listen to that after you're done here on Spotify. But you think that your voice is very, very small. And you have this embedded belief system that says that not only do you have a small voice, but it needs to stay small. Now, if you come from a religious environment that spiritualizes abuse in such a way that it makes it seem like abuse is good and loving and godly and Christian and that God in the Bible endorses abuse and thinks it's right, 
um, because you're a woman. All right. And by the way, the Bible doesn't say that. But if you've been taught that by your church, which many churches will twist, twist scripture in order to control human lives. All right. So you might think the Bible teaches that, but it actually doesn't. But if you, that you actually might believe that self-confidence is a sin, that it's wrong for you to have self-confidence. And then if you believe that you're not going to cultivate it, you're not going to ever, you're not going to ever grow it enough inside of you that it's going to actually become something that is able to make important and critical changes in your life that are going to ultimately set you free. And when I say set you free, I don't mean just set you free from your toxic environment or your toxic relationship. I'm talking about setting you free inside of yourself. That's where everyone needs to be set free because I know a lot of women that are no longer living in abusive relationships who are still trapped by abuse in the inside of their own psyches. That's it's kind of like the last, you know, like Custer's last stand. It's like you, you yourself are the one that actually holds you back from all that, that God has for you. And that's what, that's what I really love to, to help women get set free from. All right. So you're basically, you're at a prison where the door is wide open, but you won't walk out because you're afraid of what's on the other side of that door. You're actually afraid of what freedom looks like. It feels like a sin to go out there and run through the fields of grace with wild abandon. And that is exact. It's so sad because Satan really wants you to think it's a sin to do that. That's exactly what God wants you to do. That's what he created you for. You are his child. He is crazy in love with you. He's saying, come on, let's go. Let's run. Let's explore. Let's fall on our faces. Let's make mistakes. It's okay. My grace covers all of that. Come abide in me and be safe with me. Get out of this prison. So how do you get free? You have to decide if you want to keep your programming. First of all, you have to see what your programming is. All right. What are you actually believing? That comes when you start experiencing feelings inside that are really crappy. Then you go, okay, wait, where are these feelings coming from? What am I thinking in my head? What do I believe right now that's causing me to feel this way? And then you get those thoughts out on paper so you can actually see the garbage that you are believing. Once you get those thoughts out on paper, you get to decide as an adult, those, most of those thoughts come from your programming from since you were a child. All right. But as an adult now, you get to decide, hey, do I really, is this really true? It is like, for example, is self-confidence really a sin? Is this something that is serving my life? Is this something that's filling me up so that I can spill out and love others well? Is this something that's making me more Christ-like? When I go crawl under a rock and hide because I'm afraid and I have no self-confidence, then am I actually showing up for the life that God gave to me? You see, God gave you yourself. He didn't say, here, take a self and then go hide it under a rock and have no confidence in it. He didn't say that. He's got confidence in you, in your self. Why don't you? That's what you want to start cultivating. And as an adult, you can't do that when you're a kid. When you're a kid living in an abusive environment, you are stuck being inundated with thoughts and you're still being programmed. But as an adult, we get to step away from our programming and decide, do I want to keep this programming or do I want to create a new program that's going to inform all of my future decisions from here on out? And trust me, when you make good decisions for yourself, you are going, that's going to spill over into all of your relationships. You are going to be an amazeballs person in your life. You are going to be a sparkly human being that, that emanates with love and joy and peace. And that's going to trickle out into all of your relationships. All right. Then you practice using your new, you practice your new belief out by using your little voice. And, oh, I can't remember how that song goes. Um, I wrote it down somewhere, but I don't think it's there. But anyway, you use your little voice and it's able and you, it's able to say big things. Use your small voice to communicate big things to the people around you. When I say use your small voice to communicate big things, I don't mean that we all go off and blab at the mouth 
and freak out and throw up all over everybody about how bad abuse is and how this world needs to change and I'm so sick and tired of everyone abusing everybody else and now we're going to, no, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. That's not how we use our little voices. We use our little voices to love. Love changes everything. Love feels way better than hate and screaming and throwing up. And below, and I've done both, you guys. So <laughs> believe me, I'm in the pool with you on the screaming and freaking out. But love feels better and it also accomplishes way more. It doesn't seem like it. But whispers, that's why the Bible says God whispers to us. He whispers to us because whispering, actually, here's the thing. Have you ever tried this with your kids where your um, your kids are, ye- start, uh, there's like a yelling match and you need to say something really important. And so you just get your voice really, really small. Pretty soon they're like, I can't hear you, mom. I can't hear you. Pretty soon they're being quiet so they can hear your small voice because you have something important to say. Like communicate your most important things by using your small, big, powerful voice. That's how we can make a difference in this world. All right. And that's how you're going to make a difference in your own life. Um, so the other, the other, some other things that you might do with your new belief system is that you might learn to stand up for yourself. Again, not fighting, but standing up for yourself and speaking the truth. No, you may not do that to me. And I love you. And no, you may not do that. And if you do, I will need to go into the other room or I will need to leave or I will need to separate myself from you. If you continue to text me horrible things, I may need to block you. I would love to continue a relationship with you, but I will block you if you continue to harass me. Those kinds of things. You see what I'm saying? All right. You would make decisions to step out with courage and do things that you've maybe never done before. Maybe make that phone call that you've been afraid to make. Apply for that job that you are are afraid to apply for and get rejected from. By the way, we are successful on a, we build our success on a pile of failures. So if you're failure, 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 take heart. Anyone who ever accomplished anything failed a lot of times before they finally achieved something. We learn and grow and evolve personal in our personal development through failures far more than through our successes. Someone recently told me that I, they're, they're like, that Natalie, you tend to throw spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks. And they're absolutely right. I do that because I know that the more spaghetti I throw on the wall, the more things I try, the more things that I get out there and do that I, I don't, I don't sit here and go, well, if I do that, then I might fail and it won't work. And the spaghetti will fall on the ground. No way, man. I pick up that spaghetti and I throw it with enthusiasm because I know that yes, Some of it's going to fall on the ground, but one strand might say stuck on the wall and boom, I've got victory. All right. So that's what we need to get out and do. And we need to not be afraid to do that. And if, as you build your self-confidence, you will be less and less afraid of what other people will think about you. Because remember, confidence, self-confidence doesn't come from what other people think about us. It comes from what we think about us. What do you think about you? You guys, this is what I help women do. This is how I help set women free in my group, in the Flying Free, um, the Flying Free Sisterhood group, okay? And I want you to come. I want to invite you to come to the workshop that I'm doing. I'm going to tell you more about how I specifically set people free from specific thoughts and beliefs that they tend to have about themselves and about their environment and about other people and about God and all of these things and how those deeply embedded belief systems are directly creating pretty crazy results in their lives and then what they need to do to turn some of those things around. So come to the workshop. It's just, it's flyingfreesisterhood.com forward slash workshop. All right, so it's not the flyingfreenow.com. That's my public website. This is flyingfreesisterhood.com forward slash workshop. Go head to that URL and register for the workshop, and I will see you either on the 1st or the 4th. All right, thanks for listening. Until next week, fly free.